What's up guys, I'm Matt Reisinger. I'm Greg Esparza. And we are back at the Cork Insulation House. If you didn't see our video, we made a whole video on this really cool facade. But Greg, we haven't been inside yet. We got a CLT house, will you give us a tour? Absolutely, come on in. Greg, this is super cool. We got an all wood house, I like this. Yeah, I, I love it. Um, so again, like, as we were talking about in the last video, like, what can we do with plants? What can we do with plant-based materials that are carbon sequestering? Yep. And cross-laminated timber or, like, mass timber has been a material that's been getting a whole lot of press lately yes. for that ability to store carbon, but the ability to do really fantastic things structurally yep. while also being just a totally beautiful material. And so everything we're seeing here is a structural wood, right? This isn't shiplap over drywall and studs. This is actually a, a thick wood panel. You can actually, it looks like, see the uh, profile right there on that piece, right? Absolutely. Yeah, so these walls are the structure, are the final finish, and then are also the, you know, kind of substrate for applying our continuous air and water control layers. Okay. And, and cross laminated, meaning this piece of wood is running one way, the next piece of wood is running another, almost like a thick plywood, right? Yeah. Uh, and then this is all glued together in the factory Correct. and ships out in big panels. Yes, so this whole house is about 50 panels in three different thicknesses. One's wow. three and a half inches thick, one's about four and an eighth inches thick, and then the other one's five and a half inches thick. Okay. But those 50 pieces all came cut um, to site with you know, very specific labels that corresponded to kind of our assembly drawings. And we were able to put everything in place and get everything dried in in 10 business days. Oh my gosh. And nothing needed to get, nothing needed to get cut. Holy like, cow. Uh, everything just fit together just like you would, you know, want it to in like an ideal, like, you know, furniture, you know, furniture assembly, like out of the box kind of world. So, That's pretty wild. Yeah. And what are the spans that we're seeing here? Like uh, there's no interior supports, it doesn't appear to me. So you must be spanning from side to side continuous, right? Yeah, so uh, when we started working on the design for this uh, and I was looking at the CLT span tables, I was like, wow, like I can use a five layer, a five ply CLT and span it about 18 feet for a floor and then I can take a roof panel, a three layer, a three ply CLT and span it about 18 feet for a roof. Okay. And so for a house like this, about a thousand square feet, that's a really usable, like a really kind of great span uh, as kind of like the starting point for the design. Um, so yeah, we started with these, you know, kind of 18 foot span from grid line to grid line. Uh, and then we were able to use the roof panels and be like, okay, well we can actually cantilever these roof panels out towards, ah. uh, towards the west, so towards the western you know, sun. So these panels are about uh, 23 and a half feet long, totally, you know, totally continuous. And then the floor panel, we are able to cantilever these out about four feet to create this kind of entry and what's gonna be kind of a day bed sitting area over there. Awesome. Now this is uh, interesting in that the house doesn't have overhangs. Uh, and it appears that your walls, your floor, your roof are all pretty similar. It feels to me like this might be uh, a little bit of a, a perfect wall from Joe Stebrick style. <laughs> yeah, no, so I mean this, uh, we've been, you know, so I'm one of the co-founders, you know, co-founders of Moon Tower Design Build. We've been doing projects in Austin for, uh, for 12 years. That's awesome. So there's a ton of, you know, a ton of learning you get from, uh, from building all sorts of houses, doing, you know, kind of doing remodels. And one of the projects that I came across, uh, you know, in addition to a lot of your other great videos, is uh, your Perfect Wall House, which I think yeah. you, you know, built five plus years ago and is actually about a mile away from it's here. It's not too far. Uh, but that was the first house I went, went through. And I, was like, I was like, oh, like, wow, like, maybe the house doesn't need to have drywall. It's like, oh, like, oh, like, there's a lot of benefits to having all of your yep. services accessible. Yes. You know, because as, as contractors, it's like, we're very used to like, okay, well, we need to come back in. We need to cut in your drywall. We need mm. to kind of deal with some insulation to get to, you know, to get to your electrical, to get to your plumbing, to get to your mechanical. Yep. And 
And I was like, and with this it, being a structural wall, everything's exposed. Yeah, it it forces you. It's like it forces you into this kind of perfect wall yeah. kind of concept or perfect wall approach to an enclosure, yeah. um, where it's like, okay, here's your, you know, here's your structure, and then we've got a continuous air and water control layer. So I mean, that's what we've got over here. Um, so like using these vapor open, like self adhered. Thanks, Matt. Yep. Um, uh, vapor open, self adhered, uh, air uh, air barrier and water you know water resistant barrier. So this is a peel and stick. Yeah, and this is about fifty. This is about fifty perms. Okay, so it's high perm, and and wood is obviously uh, breathable, which I hate that term. I shouldn't use that. But yeah. <laughs> meaning <laughs> meaning moisture can flow in and out of it. It can absorb moisture, uh, and so by having a membrane out there that can move that moisture, you've got basically a vapor open assembly here. Yeah, and so the big, the big deal with this is like these wood panels, when they come out to site, it's like they are wrapped, but you're expecting them to get wet. Like right. when we put this together, like there was a maybe eight inch like rain, like there was a huge downpour when this all went together. Wow. So, you know, like you always say, and all the great building science say, like it's stuff, stuff can get wet as long as there's a way for it to dry, to dry. out. So uh, this kind of uh, high perm vapor open approach, which uh, you know, Vapro Shield's got that mass timber design guide over there. Uh, that's a great kind of resource for like dealing with these enclosures. Is a big you know sort of is a big part of that. And then we got our cork. You know, then we got our two inches of cork as continuous insulation on the outside. And ultimately, the house is pretty straightforward. I mean, you've got a CLT floor. And when I was looking under your crawl space earlier, it looks to me like you just have a couple steel piles on just the perimeter. There's nothing in the center here. So you've really minimized uh, both your cost and your impact, probably reduced your, the amount of concrete you're using too, I suspect. Yeah. Uh, and then this floor panel went in, the wall panels went in, and then the ceiling dropped on top of it. Everything's wrapped in vapor shield. And then your cork insulation outboard of that means that You've got a ton of mass here uh, with the wood and the cork that once it gets the temperature, it's going to want to stay at that temperature. Absolutely. And we've seen that already with, uh, even without having the mechanical system like fired, uh, yep. fired up. Um, so, you know, there was a day about a month ago where it was 45 degrees uh, outside and it had been colder overnight. So we'd get in here for work at 8 a.m. Um, and it was on the you know, kind of uh, little thermometer and humidity sensor that we have uh, up there, it was 68 degrees in here. Yeah. Um, so a lot like uh, awesome. an adobe, you know, kind of an adobe house, like yep. the, the wood has a lot of thermal, the wood has a lot of thermal mass, mm -hmm. uh, but then there's also this thermal uh, diffusivity kind of property where the, um, yeah, the heat, it's just acting as like a big heat sponge. Mm -hmm. um, so it's releasing heat slowly and it just takes a long time for it to, cool off or heat up, which yeah. is really kind of beneficial for, you know, just your comfort uh, living in the house. That's awesome. Um, and then this is kitchen, I'm assuming, where, which is the only place I'm seeing the whole house that has stick framing. But you've got, you know, kind of traditional electrical in that space. But what I like about this is if this kitchen were to come out, there's no drywall. Yep. Uh, and in fact, my perfect wall house got a remodel. Uh, and there was no drywall, there was no uh, issues with accessing everything. Do you mind if we walk back and yeah. we'll show these guys some of the mechanicals? I think it's interesting how, oh, yeah. uh, number one, it's super easy to heat and cool a place like this. You just have one two-ton carrier VRF system. Uh, you've got a good April Air pleated media filter in there. So now we've got a, uh, you know, let's say a MERV 15 potentially. You've got a VRF upflow that's going to heat and cool the whole space. It's one big open space, really straightforward. Also, pretty darn cost effective. Absolutely. Like so, I mean, uh, with you know, with mechanical design, like what I've learned from you know our friends over at Positive Energy is, you know, uh, distribution is critical, and you really want to be kind of uh, conscious about like your ductwork. You really want to do high quality ductwork, yeah. and high duct, you know, high quality ductwork, you know, costs money justifiably. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so what I was trying to do with this is like, okay, like I want to put the mechanical, you know, kind of system in the center of the house, mm -hmm. and then I want to create a mechanical core vertically so that I could have short, you know, as short as possible, short like runs. runs. Um, and then up above this, we've got kind of a metal duct, 
you know, a metal ductron that's kind of hitting, you know, basically hitting these kind of open spaces. So try to keep the mechanical system uh, really high quality, uh, really high craft, but super compact. Yeah, that's cool. And I'm assuming, like you've got here, some uh, three-quarter birch ply that's probably going to go here as well. So you ever need to change electrical, run some new Romex, uh, you know, if this is trim-headed face screwed, pop that off, everything's fully accessible. As I'm saying that, I'm realizing your bathroom's finished. That's a little different than I've ever seen for a uh, shower space before. What is going on in here? I, this, this may be this may be the world's first cork shower. I'm I'm not sure. Um, that is wild. Yeah, Check I was. Uh, yeah, I was inspired by the uh, by uh, Jake Jake Bruden with the, the build show, kind of talking about his exterior rain screen shower. Yes, and it's like, that's right. You know, like, Jake okay, did like, one. We're you know, it's like we're taking this approach on the ex you know exterior for you know protecting from like rain and storms. Like, what if I use the same assembly on the interior? That's wild. Uh, yeah. So what I did in here was uh, we used uh, panel shield. Um, so uh, Vapro Shield panel shield okay, so this SA is their, product. This is their membrane right here. Yeah. So that's a little, you know, then this is their Liquiflash product. And then we were actually able to use the Liquiflash to sort of set these, you know, they set these panels of cork almost like big pieces of tile. Mm -hmm. um, so... And they're basically um, just glued in with some type of adhesive. In. Yeah, so there's no yeah, there's no penetrations, there's no screws or anything through the through the cork. They are just glued in with the liquid flash. The liquid flash, you know, gets pretty tacky in about 30 minutes, and then like after you know, basically after 24 hours, that's the set. set. Uh, it's so, like originally windshield adhesive, so it makes a lot of sense. Yeah. That's um, wild. Yeah. So and then and then you got a, a shower pan base or what, what are we looking at? So this is a Kohler uh, purist cast iron shower oh, pan. Perfect. Which has um, a lip in there that you can just shingle it right in. Yeah, and we were you know we were talking earlier about like uh, part of the inspiration of this house. Obviously, there's like you know future kind of like forward looking like technologies, but part of it's also like looking back to mm -hmm. like a hundred years ago, like a lot of the houses that we both remodeled, where it's like okay, most of this stuff was built by carpenters. Yep. Uh, so this was kind of like you know. Uh, an extension of that that thinking, being like, okay, how can we do what we need to do with this house, but do it with carpentry skills? Yeah. So you know, uh, Leland, like our lead, like kind of cork carpenter superintendent, he built the shower That's so and awesome. was also doing the work on the ex you know on the exterior of the house with the cork. So yeah, and then the you use it for applied. trim on the inside. Exactly. And you're trimming your mirror with it and use it as accents. I love it. It's so cool. Because there's not going to be a stitch of drywall on this house, and in fact, no, no. you're probably not going to paint anything either, are you? We're going to uh, seal the floor with a penetrating oil from uh, from Sansin, um, but yeah, there's not going to be any any paint in the house. That's um, awesome. Yeah, it's uh, it. it's pretty it's yeah, it's pretty wild, and but I love it. I mean, when you walk in the house, I mean, you're never going to get this from the from the video until they you know kind of figure this out, but. You walk into this house, and the first thing that you know it hits you is the smell of fur, the smell wood. of wood. It's a real wood um, house. I love know, it. Yeah, and it's a pretty rare thing. Like I, it's this is the only house I've I've ever you know I've kind of ever been to in my experience in town where it's like it's like wow this this house smells great. Yeah, um, I love it. Yeah, so part of this is like you know kind of being like hey like how the house looks is you know is important, but we also want to be thinking about how the house smells. Yeah. And again, like all of these materials have declare labels. Um, so we know exactly like what chemicals are in them. So this is a very like healthy environment when it comes to indoor, you know, indoor air quality. So cool. What a cool house, man. I really, really like this house. How can people find out more about this house or about either your design build company, Moon Tower, or Cross Cabin Build and Supply? So you can follow us on Instagram okay. at, at Cross Cabin. Okay. Uh, then our website is crosscabinbuild.com. Uh, our sister company, uh, Moon Tower, uh, is Moontower, uh, Moontower Um Yeah. And then uh, you can re reach out to me at uh, Greg at crosscabinbuild.com if you've got any questions about you know products or uh, you know, if you're interested in purchasing some cork or hemp wool or hemp wood. So. Super cool, man. Greg, thank you so much. Really, really appreciate the tour. I bet we're going to get a lot of interesting comments. People are either going to love <laughs> the wood interior and feel like uh, home, or they're going to hate it, which is totally fine. That's kind of what we do, right? Sometimes we, we build things that are different. 
and I love this. And the other thing I really like about this is how you've taken perfect wall to a whole nother level. Uh, and taking it to a, a very uh, natural and holistic and plant-based, uh, you know, this whole house, if, if you want to take this house apart in 200 years, it doesn't work anymore. Put this in the landfill, it'll be mulch in about uh, nine months. And that, that's one of the big things, like we were able, actually able to do a carbon calculation with the uh, BEAM calculator, which is through a group called Builders for Climate Action. Mm -hmm. And because of the carbon storage of the cork, the carbon storage of the hemp, the carbon storage of the wood fiber, and the, you know, basically biogenic carbon. It's basically all carbon from the sky that's locked into these materials. Uh, so when this house was built, it is a carbon negative home. Oh, so wild. it's about negative 19,000 uh, uh, kilograms of carbon, carbon dioxide equivalent. Holy cow, that's crazy. Really neat. Super cool tour, guys. Hopefully you learned something today. Guys, if you're not currently a subscriber, hit that subscribe button below. You know, we've got new content here every Tuesday and every Friday. Follow us on Instagram or TikTok. Otherwise, we'll see you next time on The Build Show.